My name is Urso Vargas. I'm from Peru. And now I'm going to tell you about the case, the porcelain heart. Going. So we now going to know about this uh, 37 year old man. Uh, he's the teacher living in Juliaca, one of the most beautiful regions in the plain, about um, 3,800 meters above sea level. He was um, hospitalized in 2012 because of some real failure and hepatic disease, um, which he has no, um, no idea. So he was treated with uh, furosemide spironolactone for a few months with no regular follow-up. He presented one month history of palpitations, a typical chest pain, acute onset of dyspnea on exertion, abdominal distension, and peripheral edema. He denied fever uh, or cough. He, he let us know that they, in 2012, they wanted to do some surgical treatment to him, but he decided not to have it and get back to his work in Juliaca. Please go on. So this, his menstrual, his estrogen was uh, about one year with chest palpitations, dyspnea, and abdominal swelling, and legs swelling with uh, leg edema. Please go on. On physical examination, uh, we found it with a uh, low blood pressure, with a uh, normal heart rate, uh, apparently normal heart rate, and uh, good uh, saturation. But he had um, pericardial knock, which was, was really uh, special. He had uh, elevation on jugular vein and um, pulses produces with were very demonstrating signs and um, apart from abdominal swelling and liver hepatomegaly with was very evident please go on the electrocardiogram showed uh, atrophilation with a uh, normal heart rate and um, and specific signs of atrial distension and uh, normal um, no alteration in ST segment please go on uh, we ran a, a full test for him which were the white blood count was a little low with a little lymph. Please go on. It's all page. He had a jaundice, but uh, his uh, bilirubins were a little high, just not what we expected. Um, proving P was. Uh, a little high to low uh, albumin, globulin. Please go on. Little alterations in hepatic features. We searched for um, new plus, but we didn't find it. Um, we, we ran a sputum for tuberculosis, but it was negative too in several, several occasions. We searched for it too, but he didn't um, have it, or he manifested didn't have it. Um, please go on. And he had uh, hypothyroidism with uh, elevated TSH. On X-ray, we found it um, cardiomegaly with pericardial calcifications and ray pleural effusion. Go on, please. The echocardiogram was uh, difficult to do because of the um, pericardium. It was so, so rough. And uh, 
we could see um, a good ejection fraction with um, variation on E, mitral, mitral E, um, significant variation and significant variation in trickle speed uh, um, feeling flow. We also found reversal flow in superhepatic veins and uh, right atrial right ventricle gradient with uh, 25 milligrams. Um, this is a, a slide. Um, we couldn't recover the, um, the echocardiogram images because it was, um, they were lost in pandemia. Please go on. The um, tomography showed a uh, very calcificated pericardium. It was about four or five millimeters. About um, uh, besides, we had right um, basal atelectasia, right pleural fusion, and we found no pericardial fusion. Please go on. Cath lab showed pulmonary artery about 23 millimeters of mercurium with a little high um, pulmonary wedge pressure and a little low aortic pulse, uh, aortic pressure beside the square sign and uh, calcificated pericardium, which were also very demonstrating. So um, please go on. So we have um, a right hair, right half failure features with the constrictive physiology demonstrated by echo and with um, physical signs and uh, pericardial calcification demonstrated in X-ray and tomography and echocardium. So we reached the constrict pericardial um, diagnosis. So the, the treatment was pericardiectomy. And this is where we show these videos. Can, can they run? So these were special for us because um, we never had a case like this. The surgery team was excited. They once opened, we can notice no heart movement, no heartbeat, because it is um, behind this classificated pericardium. It was very difficult to open it, even with normal scissors. So they had to use the scissors they used to cut nails, cut um, iron. So it was, it is a case where they must treat for us. Okay. So one last. Okay. So once liberated, we can notice the heart beating be behind it. And we can notice the um, pericardium calcification. Okay, now they're finishing their cuts with that um, big scissor. So at uh, the macroscopy, they found uh, membranous pericardial fragments of about 10 per 8 per 1 with higher consistency with um, uh, and microscopy. They found pericardial fragments with great calcification with no granulomas, no melin, no plasma, 
And um, in pericardial fluid, they, well, they found no microorganisms. We couldn't confirm it was by tuberculosis. The patient had no tuberculosis features or um, signs. He had no tuberculosis history. So the um, origin of this pericardial uh, construction had no really, um, uh, really no, that, no, no origin. Well, the patient still lives in, in Juliaca. He uses uh, warfarin because uh, right eye thrombus found it in 2020. And he's on bisoprol and propafenone. And he has no longer uh, failure syndrome features. Go on, please. Hello? Okay. Well, uh, about constrictive, per constrictive percutaries, it's about 9% of, um, it, well, it is a rare disease that develops because of a chronic inflammatory process that causes fibrosis and thickening of the precardium and leads to a loss of elasticity that limits ventricular filling. Approximately 9% of patients with acute pericarditis um, develop constrictive physiology in the developing uh, world. Infectious etiologies uh, like tuberculosis remain the most cause. Um, especially in developing countries. The condition is um, rare in adults and very rare in children. And it is more common uh, in those who have undergone cardiac surgery. Um, there's about uh, three to one male predominance. And there's no racial predilection. About uh, is you know, the vital physiology. It can be distinguished in two domains: asymptotic aortic and respiratory facet ventricular intended interdependence. Um, the chronic pericarditis involves simple obliteration of pericardial cap cavity by granulation tissue, and it um, develops. Classifications. So the, um, the right rigid thickened pericardium limits the ventricular filling as the elastic limit of the disease pericardium is much lesser than that of normal pericardium. So ventricular filling is early in early diastole is not affected as in only impeded when, when the elastic limit of the pericardium is reached in contrast to cardiac tampon, where the ventricular filling is impeded the diastole. So this results in decreased ventricular diastolic volume and de decreased stroke volume at uh, and cardiac output thickening and um, pericardium prevents the normal spirit to decrease in intrathecal pressure from being transferred to the heart chamber. So it um, leads to cosmos sign that was in this patient. Um, the, there are associations with, um, well, we, we talked already about respiratory facets and changes. So can we go on, please? Um, go forward. So in this patient, we found uh, about all features that uh, were expected to be in constrictive pericarditis. We had uh, elevated jugular venous pressure and uh, uh, we had hepatomegaly, uh, peripheral edema, ascites, and we had um, also pericardial knock, pulsus productus. The EKG was um, not uh, specific. Um, it, it can sometimes get low voltage when there is pericardial fusion, but it, this was not the, the case. And we do saw uh, 
classification in the CT scan. Please go on. The echocardium was um, really demonstrating also, and it had all the features uh, with uh, ventricular septal motion abnormality and um, mitral medial and the velocity um, above now nine, um, and it was um, in a reversal relation with a uh, septal mitral and the velocity and um, hepatic vein spiratory diastolic reversal radio was also high and um, it had a restricted mitral inflow with um, a pleuritic vena cava. Please go on. The um, differential diagnosis um, was with um, neoplasm, most frequent cardiac sarcoma, but we didn't find any of that. Um, dilated temporary, we, we, we didn't have that either. Um, we didn't have um, HIV or hemochromatosis or kudosis, um, but we do have uh, trichospid retrochations and we suspect it um, may have had tuberculosis some um, in, in, because this is the most frequent uh, infections um, because of the, the place we are. Please go on. So in constricted pericarditis, we had um, the, about all the pathophysiology we had now discussed, lead to metabolic acidosis. It can lead to hypoxia, um, renal, renal and hepatic failure, pulmonary hypertension, which can lead to complications as um, shock and death. The treatment, of course, is uh, surgical treatment pericardiotomy with a um, mortality of 10 to even to 5, 55%, depending on how bad the patient um, gets to surgical treatment. Um, the control symptoms, we had uh, diuretics and uh, of course, controlling comorbidities. Like in this case, the patient developed atrial fibrillation with um, atrial thrombus. So um, this is the case I had, I had to share with you. And this um, phrase that uh, it's um, really good, the, path, the past beat inside the like second heart. Remember that the past can lead to uh, a present and a future. And uh, in this word, uh, to pan and chis kama, that means until life gather us again. So um, thank you for listening. I'm sorry about the problem with the presentation.